do that on the back of my hand so that when I have rough days like I've had these last few work days that I'll remember. <laughs> so with our Red Heart welcome, if you're new today, uh, at Unity of Bremerton, we welcome you in the spirit of love. We want you to know no matter where you are on your journey of faith, you are always welcome here. We know that the world is a better place when we are willing to share our hearts. We give you the red, this red heart as a symbol of the steadfast spirit that lives within each of us. And we ask you to carry this symbol as a member of the Red Heart Fellowship. Let it be a reminder that the love of God is always with you and to share your heart wherever you go. The Red Heart as a symbol of, the, it, it, as a symbol of fellowship in the world can spread love one heart at a time. Let's start the movement here. And for those that are, that are visiting us or watching online for the first time, we want you to know our speakers are different every week, so that we encourage you to come and watch online more than once so that you enjoy the diversity and the differences. And it goes on. And for Unity Happenings, that, uh, Next Sunday, we will uh, do a 12 Powers Part 1 talk. And then on February 3rd is Larry Davis and Carmel Pennington and Jamie doing music. And on Thursday nights, we have our Course in Miracles Ooh. at 7, it's from 7 to 8. And for those who have never attended it might want to know more about it, you can talk to Jamie. <laughs> Or a Debbie Clay, and, and, or um, you know, we have several people here that that attend that regularly, and would be happy to share more about that. <laughs> and then for um, our board stuff, we have Laura. Thank you, fellow <laughs> Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I just have a few brief announcements. Please be sure that your cell phones are off or on vibrate. The sound really carries in here. If this is your first time with us at this location, we want to share some important information. The ladies' bathroom is to the right. The men's bathroom is through those double doors. There are also bathrooms upstairs. <laughs> Buses do not run on Sundays, so you can park on the street where the bus stops are located. We want to remind you that we are live streaming this service. We ask that you keep conversation down because it is being picked up very easily in this new location. We also want to remind you that prayer request forms are available in the back next to the prayer box. We also have chaplains available to pray with you. Unity of North Kipsap usually has a weekly meditation. Thursday. Thursday, January 24th at 7, is the Didgeridoo and the 2019. Join Dr. Gale as he plays the Didgeridoo to dissolve energy blocks and to help us move more smoothly into 2019. Everyone is welcome. Meditations are held every Thursday in the Fellowship Hall at Faith Episcopal in Postville. And Cindy and I have been to the Didgeridoo, and it's absolutely fantastic if you've never heard it. Real similar to, kind of similar to his flute, it's just a really great feeling. Um, in our new location, we have many tasks that must happen every Sunday, and we need more things to help this happen, more help to make things happen. There are sign-up sheets on the table. Please sign up for a specific task or just plan being here by 9.15 on Sundays so you can help us get everything in place so we're ready to start by 10 a.m. Being a member means putting your time and talent as well as your treasure. Let's make this new beginning a time for everyone to be more involved. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please see a board member. Thank you. Thank you. I like it, the Nora and Laura team. <laughs> you know, the girl with the short, dark hair and glasses. That was a joke. Come on. <laughs> okay. Now it's um, time for the lighting of the Christ candle and the candle represents the divine light within each of us and then after I light the candle we will read our mission statement and our invocation together.
I open my mind and heart to the Christ presence and my life is enriched in every possible way. Divine love blesses all that I think, say, and do. From Genesis 28, verse 16, Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And let us remember, divine love blesses all that we think, say, and do. God love us. <laughs> All right, this is a song I wrote and sang. Uh, I think I told the story before, but driving one day I was kind of wanting to find some kind of peace, and uh, so I, this came to me, and uh, I kept repeating it over and over and over again until I got home. And it worked pretty good. As, I, as it turns out, I used it quite a bit. Like a sunbeam to the sun, I am one with God. Like a I am one with 
speaker for him. Anyway, today's topic is what does God want for you? We hear a lot about what we're supposed to do for God, how we're supposed to get where we need to be to get God's approval, to be non-sinners, if you will. All of the rules and regulations that we need to adhere to to be in a state of grace. No, <laughs> not going for it. I was one of two children in my family, and I was the favorite. Um, my dad gave me anything I wanted. I was spoiled. But I asked, my dad gave it to me, if he could possibly do it. So if I think about God as my father, what is he willing to give me? It isn't a one-way street. I don't just give. I receive. God is there to give me the things I desire. Where do those desires come from? They come from God. If I feel it in here, it's God-directed. If my ego feels that if I feel it up here, not necessarily. That doesn't mean that I can't want a new car and still have it be something that's encouraged by God. Because if my father here wanted to give me stuff, what do you think your father wants to give you now? We're darn sure not going to end up in poverty, right? So, over and over again we're told in the Bible that all we have to do is ask and we receive it. The trick is believing that we're going to receive it and being ready to receive it. You know, we say things a lot about, oh, I want a new job, I want to live in a different place. Whatever it is, we have all these wishes and desires, some are from the ego, but you always know the difference. You know what's coming from within, from that spark of divinity that's in you and you know what's coming from the ego to keep up with the Joneses or whatever it is you're into at the moment. And we all get tied up in it. But when that desire is that God-directed desire, it's inspired. But if we just want it, we don't get anywhere. You have to be ready to receive it. Do you believe that you can have what you want? Do you believe in the very center of your being that God wants only good for you? Is divine spirit with us all the time, constantly encouraging us, helping us to move forward? The trick is we have to listen. And that isn't always easy because ego gets in the way, life gets in the way. As a matter of fact, when I was getting prepared for this, I've been doing a lot of um, just background kind of prayer work lately, saying, okay, why am I off track? Because I've been off track, not where I wanted to be necessarily, and I kept feeling that feeling inside. This isn't it. This isn't where I need to be. This isn't what I need to be doing. So I started telling Michael, you know, I don't know that I want to do what I'm doing anymore. Well, he keeps saying, do what you love, and the money will come. Well, easy for him to say, he can sing, he can write. I can do accounting, but does that really count? Yeah, it does. God gave me that ability, and I bought it all the way. But it's something I'm very good at. I have that analytical type of mind. 
but doing what I'm doing, I own my own business and I have for over 20 years. Um, came out of the blue, I said, God, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, if you want me to be an accountant, I'll be one. Because it kept happening in my life. No matter what job I got, I became an accountant. And I hated every minute of it. Well, when I quit fighting it and said, okay, if this is what I'm supposed to do, I will accept it with good grace. I walked into a job that I would never have imagined I would get. Doing something that, yeah, it's accounting, but it's a mystery every day that you have to solve, a puzzle you have to put together. I've learned so much in the last 20 years doing what I should have been doing all along, which is shut up and listen. God said, this is where you should be. That spark within me has known forever. This is what I was good at. But I didn't want to do it. My ego wanted to do ballet. My ego wanted to sing. My voice didn't. My ego did. So I married a musician and that, that got me where I wanted to go. So it worked. <laughs> but now I'm at a point in my life where I'm like, I don't really care about what I'm doing so much anymore. I had five employees until recently, and I decided I wanted to downsize and watch your affirmations, because I said over and over again, I'm tired of working this hard. I don't want to work this hard. I don't want to manage this many people, especially when I get a little discouraged or everybody was going off in the wrong direction, or I was. Um, I affirmed it enough to where my major contract came to an end. And then I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What do I do now? That, that wasn't what I meant. I mean, I just meant that I was tired. I needed a little vacation. I wasn't really resentful that Michael got to retire and I didn't. Sorry, honey. Uh, but I realized that all of those things I'd been putting out had been negative affirmations. And what did the universe do? <laughs> Gave me what I wanted, exactly what I wanted. So what did I end up with? I ended up, instead of having four or five people working for me and with me, I ended up cutting it back to the point where I can't let them do the work anymore. I have to do it all myself not the smartest tool in the shed, but it was what I affirmed. It's what I asked for. I know you've all had times in your life where you've said, I'm sick and tired of this or that, or I don't want that. Well, that's as good an affirmation as anything else. I've been doing one lately that's a real beaut, and my family knows. I have been saying, I have a client who's, um, they're a new company, so they're having some difficulties with getting their things in order. And one of those things they don't generally get in order is payment on time. So instead of saying, I get paid on time, I've been commiserating with all the other vendors that aren't, and saying, well, we'll do that if I get paid, or we'll do that when I get paid and every month my checks are later and later. Why? What'd I do? Somebody out there didn't do it. The company didn't do it, I did it. From the first time the checks were late, I continued to affirm that they were going to be late. And they have been. This month, they're not gonna be. They'll be here when they should be, because I believe it. And that's the biggie. You can make affirmations all day long. Whatever it is, you can say, I'm going to have money. I'm going to have good health. Whatever that affirmation is, you can say it all day long, but you have to believe it. You have to know it in here. You have to know that it came from within, that it came from spirit, and that spirit is going to take care of it. You don't have to sit down and figure out how it's going to happen. I want to be able to retire in comfort. Now there's a worthy goal. Just, I don't want to work this much anymore isn't the same thing at all. 
when we affirm the things that we are really looking for and we affirm it the right way and then we prepare ourselves to receive it and prepare the people around us for the knowledge that we're going to receive it. I mean, I want to go to on, on a nice vacation this next summer and I was thinking about that on the way over. Well, summer's not that far away. Why don't we plan it now? And I think we should go to Hawaii. Because <laughs> McKenna wants to go. There you go. But if I start affirming now, and I believe it, am I going to go to Hawaii? But if I just sit around and say, I wish I could go somewhere, wish I could go somewhere, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to get me anywhere. Nowhere close to where I want to be. You know, people often say that you shouldn't pray for money that that's not the thing to do. We don't believe that in unity. In unity, we know that is what you pray for. Not just that. We pray for wealth. And when we pray for wealth, we're praying for wealth in our physical well-being, in the world around us, in everything. Wealth isn't money. Wealth is all the things that contribute to our happiness. And if we don't have that ourselves, we can't share it. We can't give it. And that's a big part of this whole thing of what God wants for us. We need to share whatever it is that God gives us needs to be shared. If we don't share it, it means that we think there won't be any more of it. We're holding it because there's not going to be any more. It's like not paying one of the responsibilities we have because, oh, I'll wait till the next check comes in. Because there's not going to be more money. What's the deal? Why are we holding back? Because even though we say we're prosperous, we don't believe it. We're not holding it inside. We're saying it, and saying it is a good first step. But you have to say it. You have to meditate on it. You have to act as if. Catherine Ponder, who happens to be one of my favorite authors, and I was telling Cindy before we got started, she's what brought me back to unity. My mother was uh, as metaphysical as they come, probably, and she had a myriad of books, which I inherited. And I was going through things one day. I just really not happy with the way things were. And I picked up a Catherine Ponder book, and it led me right back to unity. And this is one of the stories that she tells that I really liked. It, a housewife has described how daily meditation upon substance filled her grocery shelf. Prior, prior to spending this time daily, she had never had enough groceries on hand to feed relatives or her family, or the friends that often visited her. When she began to make a daily affirmation and to meditate on the substance that she desired, and only on that, thinking about it being there, visualizing it being a reality, all of a sudden, people that visited started bringing gifts of groceries and other types of food and just continued doing it. She had a friend who brought baked goods because he worked at a bakery, another one who just plain brought things from her own pantry because she had plenty. Everybody that she knew felt guided to bring those things to her, not because she put it out to her friends that she needed stuff, but because she put it out to the universe, that this is what she desired. There's um, a story in here, too, about another lady who actually didn't have enough food to feed her kids that particular day. So she went about setting her table, cleaning everything up, making everything nice, got out her pans in the kitchen, and before dinner time, she had the food she needed to feed her family. Well, where did it come from? It didn't come from the neighbor. It did, but it didn't directly come from the neighbor. It came from that divine inspiration that 
went out into the universe that encouraged other people to give. If you're not willing to receive it, you can do all the meditating and praying you want. But if you don't get ready to receive it, it's not going to come. You don't have to worry about how it's going to come. Okay, I want a new job. So how am I going to get that new job? I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to do affirmations on it. And I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open. And I'm going to listen to what Spirit tells me. Because if you do that, the ideas will come. It'll, next thing you know, it'll be there. There's a story that I like to tell about a lady who drowned in a flood. And she gets to the pearly gates. And she meets with God and she says, What's up, God? I asked you to save me. I believed in you. I said I had faith in you. And here I am. And God said, well, I sent a news broadcast out that said there was going to be a flood. And then I sent the policeman by to tell you that you needed to evacuate. And you said, God will take care of me. And then, as the water rose, I sent a boat to get you. And you said, God will take care of me. And when you were on the roof of your house, I sent you a helicopter. And you said, God will take care of me. Madam, I sent a warning. The police, a boat, a helicopter. What more did you want me to do? She didn't do the work. She just said God's going to take care of it. That's a great thing to say, and it's a great faith to have. But if you don't listen to what Spirit says back, you're not going to get anywhere. When you meditate on something that you want, and I'd encourage you all to try this. Just try it for a week and see what happens. Think about something that you would really like and take it into prayer with you and meditate on it just once a day and maybe before you go to bed at night, think about it again and then just get quiet and listen for the answers. And within a week, I'm going to bet you, you'll have whatever it is or you'll have the means to get it because you learned not just to ask and believe you get it, but to listen to how you're going to get it. It all goes together. You can't do one piece of it without the rest of it. It gets you absolutely nowhere. So when people, and I'm guilty of it, uh, when they sit around and say, I wanted to do this, I really, really wanted to do that. Well, no, you didn't. Because if you'd wanted to, and it had been the right move for you, it would have happened. And we have to watch what we ask for because the universe will give us what we ask for. Doesn't have to be good for us. Doesn't have to be anything except what we ask for. And my big one that I'm getting over, I think my family will remind me about this later, I'm sick and tired of you fill in the blank. People at work, oh, worrying about finances, cleaning, cooking, God knows. Um, whatever it is, I'm sick and tired. So what am I? And who asked for it? God did not want to give me that. The universe did not want for me to have that. I wanted for me to have that. And the universe said, okay, that's what you want. That's what you get. That's where we fall into a real mess. When we decide we know what's best for us. And we're going to ask for it, but we're not asking. We're going to tell the universe what we want. And we're going to get it. Boy, are we going to get it. 
and we are not going to be happy little campers. And we have no one to look to besides ourselves. So change your life. Change your mind. That's all you have to do. Change your mind. And imagine it. Just put it in your mind and keep it there. Write it out. Come up with your own affirmations. Spend some time every day thinking about those things you want. And don't worry about the fact that you're not praying for world peace. We all want world peace. We all want an end to hunger. We want all of those things, but if we can't start it at home, we aren't going to get anywhere else. We can't want it out there. We have to want it in here. And we have to lead by example with whatever it is. If we don't have it, we can't share it. If we don't know it, we can't teach it. And you are only limited by one thing in the whole universe. And that's your ability or inability to imagine it. If you can imagine it, you can have it. Anybody believing in that yet? If you imagine it, you can have it. Be careful what you imagine. It's the stray thoughts that get us. It's the little ones. The, the dog won't behave. Well, guess what you just did? The dog is now eating your shoe because you did the affirmation. It's a tough road to, to go down. It's mine. I have to own it. Good, bad, or indifferent. I can share owning it with spirit. If it's the right stuff. But if it's the wrong stuff, it's what I asked for. I got it. And no matter how we look at it, we're responsible for everything that happens in our lives. And I know sometimes that's really hard to think. When you've got circumstances that you really feel were beyond your control, it's possible that they were. But what's the lesson that you needed to learn from it? What's the thing that's good that came out of it? If you sit down right now, today, and make a list of what's good in your life and what's not so good in your life, and you concentrate on eliminating the things that aren't good in your life for the next 30 days. Concentrate on them getting better. Visualize them being good. Whether it's you don't sleep well at night, you don't have enough money to do what you want, the cat won't behave, the dog ran away, whatever it is. Make that list. Take that into prayer with you and into your meditation every day. Think about it. But first, review all of the things on your list that are good. And one by one, the things that aren't so good that are on your list will go away, they'll resolve, or they'll cease to matter to you anymore. Which can really happen a lot. You know, we get all wound up in a little thing. She's doing that, and she won't stop. And when you allow yourself to think about the more important things, suddenly what he or she is doing doesn't really make any difference. And it doesn't really make any difference if I gain five pounds. The world does not come to an end. And I had cookies I really liked, so who cares? <laughs> Bottom line is, cut yourself some slack. Do a few of the things you want without thinking, oh, this isn't the right thing to do. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to want good for everybody and everything, and I'm supposed to be selfless, and I'm supposed to be this. No, you're not. You're supposed to be the best you you can be. You can't be anything for anybody if you aren't who you need to be. And that doesn't mean people around you can't help you become that person. Believe me, I have teachers all over the place. Um, and, and it works. You listen to the people that you love. It helps you become who you want to become. 
But get out of your own way. Stop already. Let God do his job. His, hers, whatever. I'm, I'm saying God because it's a relatable word. It still means the same thing. Universal energy, spirit, whatever you choose to call it. You can be scientific about it. You can be God is love. It doesn't matter. We all get the point. It's that spark of divinity that we all have within us. Without it, we don't have a whole heck of a lot. We aren't even here. If you tune in and listen to what God wants for you, and you take the steps to work with God to get it, oh, I guess I'm throwing things down. <laughs> You're gonna get where you wanna get. And I'd just like to take a minute and have a few people tell me one thing that they want. One thing that you want that you're willing to take the next week or so and concentrate on. You willing to start? You're looking at me? <laughs> I'm thinking because I don't want to say what it is. <laughs> oh, okay, well you don't have to, yeah. as long as you have it. Right, yeah, I have Then work on it and see what happens. Yeah. A good goal, a very good goal, and a sidetrack there. Go ahead. Oh, promotion at work. Great. I want to breathe deeply and often. Let's affirm that with him. You breathe deeply, deeply and, and often, often and feel refreshed. <clears throat> Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> Be very, very careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stop already. Cindy. That's not a bad place to be either. You know, and it's funny because I was thinking about that the other day. And as far as having the things that I want in life, I got them. There's minor inconveniences here and there. But the big stuff is there. I got it. And I just need to let God tweak it a little bit and pay attention. You have been listening really, really well. What is it? What would you like? To finally get out of debt. Yes. I can go with that one. To get out of debt. And, and that's something that I, I, yeah, I agree. We, Michael and I took the four T's class years ago. And while I will say that the facilitator on the recording is probably the most boring <laughs> voice I have ever heard. You've been there, yeah. Yes, I I've have. Ever heard in my life. That class changed our lives. We were living in Southern California in a place neither one of us were real happy with. I was born and raised there. Michael came from New York. We wanted to be somewhere else, and we wanted to be doing something else. And we took that class, and we followed the steps. And now we're in Washington. We first moved to Northern California, which was a huge improvement. I got a fabulous job. We went from Lancaster, the middle of the Mojave Desert, to Monterey. Who gets to live in Monterey? I got a job in Monterey. Yeah. It, it happened because we believed it. Because we listened, we took the steps. And it happened. And we went from there to Sacramento. I got another job, a bigger promotion. And neither Michael or I had ever made decent money. I mean, a little above minimum wage, but he's a musician. We're not gonna get rich there, except in spirit, which we always are. But I was working in an office as a sort of accounts payable person, of all the jobs anybody ever wanted. But we took that 4Ts class and we followed every bit of it, and that included the big T word, the tithe. You knew it was coming. Come on, you knew I was gonna say it sooner or later, because if you don't give back, you're just stopping the flow. 
And when you stop the flow, the dam builds up, and when it overflows, it's not pretty. You have to keep that money or whatever it is in circulation. Keep it going. We followed the four T's. <clears throat> Three T's, whatever it is. Yeah, that's it. I always forget the fourth one. But we followed it, <clears throat> including something we need to break the habit of, going to high-end malls and uh, window shopping, which more often than not turns out to shopping. And McKenna sometimes reaps the real benefits of that. <laughs> but we did it. Now we're up here. I went from a dead-end job to owning my own business to being very successful and not the way most people do it. Not with a huge education. I don't have it at all. I'm really, I have a couple college classes, but I did not complete high school. I own my own company, and this is not to brag. It's to show you what you can do. Last year, my income by myself was over $100,000. Yes. I worked for it, no two ways about it. But the opportunity was there. Why was the opportunity there? Because I committed to it. Because I sent it out to the universe and the universe gave it back. That's all we need to do. And if you can wade through the four T's with the original recordings, more power to you and you deserve anything you get. <laughs> the teachings are fabulous. The teacher leaves a little bit of, I think that maybe one of the things he should have prayed for was a less monotone speaking voice. But it works. All of it works when you go about it the right way. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it 100% every time. You don't have to say, oh gosh, I had that thought. Oh, there goes all the good stuff. No, it doesn't work that way. And you're all intelligent enough to know it doesn't work that way. You wouldn't be here in this room, open to hearing this stuff, if you didn't already know it. There isn't anything new that I can say. There's not one thing new in the universe that I can say about spirit or about the laws of attraction. There's nothing new here. It's always how it's said, how you're listening at the time, and are you ready for it? Is anybody here feeling like they're 100% ready for the good that God wants for you to have? Great. Great. And anybody who doesn't feel like they're quite there, go ahead. I do want to say what it is I want. I'm okay. Put it out there. Is I would like to have a lot of people at class at a free workshop tomorrow night. There you go. Great goal. At my healing center. Great. I'd like the information after we're done, if you don't mind. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you're not quite ready for it yet, take that into prayer with you. Think about it. Maybe even write it out. What is it I need to do to be ready for the good that you want for me? What are the steps I need to take? Talk to a friend. Ask a neighbor. But ask spirit first. And then be willing to accept the answer. Do the work. Without the work, we're nowhere. Without the work, you're the lady at the pearly gates wondering why she drowned. None of us want to be there. So let's hop in the boat or catch the helicopter and live the life we're meant to live. Thank you. See, now you know why I married her, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
She tells good jokes too. She should be around as long as And she's not politically correct most of the time. Oh, come on now. I'm never <laughs> It's a great life if you
together. I give willingly, joyfully, and lovingly, knowing that God is the constant source of my supply. I give with graciousness and receive with gratitude. Thank you. Now for some good news. I have some. I've spent the last two weeks uh, working every day, except for the day that I called out sick to go to the doctor. And I have been asked to extend that for 10 more working days at, at the school district. So with, um, between the days off and such where there's no school, I'll be working through February 5th if I choose to work all those days. And so far, I plan on it. <laughs> so my paycheck will be nice so that I can manifest one way. Because I'm going to do that work. Yeah. <laughs> Any other good news? Jamie. I just want to, <clears throat> I just want to announce my wife and I are turning 60 uh, <laughs> I'm on February 1st and she's on February 8th. And we're having a party on February 10th at 3.30, the building behind where my mom lives, the building behind Target. Um, and there's, there's parking, where, uh, there's parking up above there. So if you want to know more, just let me know. But that's good. Yeah. Oh, and my, oh and, and my grandniece, Nora, who you might, might have seen pictures of on the line because they have pictures every day. Um, turns one on the second. Oh, cute. Another February kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm going because I'm going to celebrate my son's birthday because his is the seventh. <laughs> and he knows Barbara since he was seven. <laughs> I'll be 70 in February, so. Huh? I'll be coming to you. All right. Yeah, because I got sick. Yeah, it's a good mom. Get the We've got a brand new grandchild that was just born this past Thursday. That makes number eight. Oh. We almost have our own baseball team. Yeah. <laughs> but her name is Charlotte Lillian. So. Oh, Charlotte. Yes. Sure. Yeah, we probably call her Charlie. But Charlie. Charlie. Well, the benefits of having more than one child. Yeah, that option. There you go. Yeah, but it's Christmas. Thank God for Amazon. Woo! Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. The benefits of having only one child. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the holidays are better. And don't forget, I'll be in the back um, available to pray with anybody that wants to count their blessings or, you know, for more blessings. So now we'll stand and join hands. And Here we go. <laughs> so we oh, three, two, three, four. <laughs>